Welcome to lecture 14. Today we will find out about different types of storage systems. In this lecture, we will first do an overview of storage systems and then examine the features of manual, semi-automatic and fully automatic storage systems. There are various types of warehouse systems available. These can be broadly divided into three categories. Manual storage systems, also known as meant to good systems, semi-automated storage systems and automated storage systems, also known as goods to men systems. Different storage systems possess different advantages and limitations and will not suit all types of products and businesses. Choice depends on product profile, cost, size, durability, packaging, temperature control requirements on the product, or the profile, does the business have bulk orders or loose orders? Nature of business, is this a fast moving or slow moving business? What are the customer service requirements? The nature of the warehouse, is this a local or regional distribution center? Will there be cross stocking? Warehouse specifications, what is the floor area? What is the clear ceiling height? And cost, what is the company's budget? What are the cost constraints which are faced by the company? More than one system is usually combined in the same warehouse depending on the needs of the business. Picking the right system is critical for achieving overall business efficiency, meeting customer service expectations, and ensuring profitability for the business. Now let's look at manual storage systems or man to goods systems. Block stacking is the simplest and cheapest possible manual storage system. It is easy to set up. Once you've got the warehouse space, you can implement block stacking immediately. It is low cost as no additional equipment is required. All that's required is perhaps some line markings on the floor or signages in order to have more orderly storage. Overall, it is quite efficient use of space. So what is the right type of cargo for block stacking? Some examples include beer and chemicals. Beer is a fast moving product. Upon production, it is packed into cartons, stacked into pallets, and these pallets can be stacked up to four or five high without fear of damaging the product. These are usually distributed to retailers very quickly. As the beer does not stay in the warehouse for long periods of time, there is no need to invest in expensive storage systems. Similarly, pharmaceutical production may use chemicals packed in drums or totes. As these chemicals are input into the production continuously to support manufacturing, block stacking makes sense. So what are the limitations of block stacking? First and foremost, goods need to be stackable without damage. Secondly, there is low accessibility for goods which are at the bottom of a given style pallets. As such, goods stored using block stacking need to be in large homogeneous batch sizes. Otherwise, a lot of time is wasted moving goods around looking for the correct ones. Pallet racking is a relatively cheap and efficient manual storage system that is very commonly used. Numerous pallets can be stored in a racking framework. It is possible to assess any particular pallet using the appropriate MHE and the pallet racking is configurable to fit different types of pallets of different loads. The most basic type of pallet racking is single deep selective pallet racking. It is ideal for small to medium warehouses as it is an orderly storage system which provides high visibility of all cargo. In double deep selective pallet racking, pallets are stored two rows deep from each side instead of just one. This results in some compromise on accessibility but greatly increases storage density. In order to assess pallets stored in the second row from the aisle, a rich truck with an extended fork is required. Double deep racking is ideal for situations in which multiple pallets of exactly the same item are being stored. For drive-in or drive-through racking, pallets are placed back-to-back -back on rails. A picker is able to drive a rich truck into the racking bay to deposit or retrieve pallets. This system also provides an improved cubic utilization. Drive-in or drive-through racking is suitable for homogeneous products with relatively short shelf life or high throughput. Depending on whether the racking is assessed from one or two ends, it can be used for products which are handled on a LIFO, last-in, first-out or FIFO, first-in, first-out basis. Cantilever racks are used for storage of long, bulky, irregular-sized items. The arms extending perpendicularly from uprights may be tilted to securely store these items. Some products that cantilever racks are used for include metal bars, wooden beams, coils of cables, conduits, lumber, pipes, hospital beds, and even cars. Shelving is a relatively cheap and efficient manual storage system, commonly used for small loads including cartons, packages, and loose items in general. There are a wide range of shelves possible, steel panels, wire mesh, timber boards, etc. 
Shelves are configurable to fit items of different sizes and weights using combinations of frames of different heights and beams of different load-bearing capacities. They are also configurable to accommodate different operation volumes. In this example, single-tier shelving is used to store small packages, example in spare parts storage for automobile or aerospace industry. In this example, multi-tier shelving is used in combination with tote boxes to store loose items, example pharmaceuticals for a chain of clinics. In this example, a three-level mezzanine shelving system is used for high-density storage of small packages. The mezzanine is equipped with staircases and even lifts to facilitate accessibility of workers and transfer of goods. This is sometimes seen in the semiconductor industry. Besides manual storage systems, there are also some semi-automatic storage systems which do not run on electricity but instead rely on simple mechanical design to achieve an overall higher efficiency level. In the pushback storage system, pallets are set on rolling tracks and pushed back by new pallets. This system allows for storage of products several pallets deep and improves overall cubic utilization. A pushback storage system operates like a vending machine. Gravity keeps the most recently loaded pallet in front of the bay and the next pallet moves to the front once the first has been removed. If assessed for only one side, it is suitable for homogeneous products stored in large quantities following LIFO requirements. If, however, it is assessed from both sides, a pallet flow rack can be used for homogeneous products stored in large quantities following five-fold requirements. A carton flow rack can be designed along the same principles. Cartons set on rolling tracks can be pushed back by new cartons loaded into the racking. Gravity keeps the most recently loaded one right in front. Finally, we come to automatic storage systems, also known as goods demand systems, which are electrically powered and utilize robotics and advanced computing algorithms to achieve optimum efficiency. First up, we have the automated storage and retrieval system, also known as ASRS. ASRS are widely used in manufacturing facilities, distribution centers, and warehouses globally. There are typically four components in an ASRS. There is high density storage with defined locations. There are conveyors and automatic guided vehicles such as cranes or shuttles moving along the storage aisles or put away a retriever. There is also a user interface where warehouse workers can pick up or input goods. Most importantly, there is a master computer control system which controls the movement of the cranes or shuttles and determines storage locations based on defined algorithms. For example, frequently picked goods are stored nearer to the user interface to ensure they can be picked faster. After each storage and retriever, the master control system updates the inventory to ensure accuracy at all times. When is an ASRS a good idea? It is ideal for frozen foods, example meat and seafood, which needs to be stored at minus 28 degrees because these are conditions not favorable for human workers. It is great for high-value products such as expensive champagne, which requires strict inventory control since no human workers are able to easily assess the products. It is suitable for companies which may have very few stock-keeping units or SKUs, but very high volumes. In particular, if no further value-added services are required, the ASRS can support inbound and outbound with high efficiency. And lastly, the ASRS achieves very desirable vertical cubic utilization, and this makes it attractive in places with high land costs but no limits on building height. What are the advantages of ASRS? The first clear advantage is that of reduced labor costs. Automation reduces labor for transporting items into and out of storage areas. There is also increased workplace safety as workers are removed from difficult working conditions such as cold food storage environments. There is greatly improved warehouse space utilization both vertically and horizontally since storage areas are designed with narrow aisles as no workers need to move along those aisles. And there is increased inventory control and tracking since the master computer control system maintains accurate inventory information at all times. Despite its many advantages, like any other system, the SRS has plenty of disadvantages too. The most obvious one is the fact that it requires a considerable upfront investment. There is just no such thing as a good and cheap ASRS. Besides the initial capital investment, one also needs to consider ongoing maintenance costs. There is no way to save on maintenance because neglecting to do so can result in untimely, severe disruptions. When a breakdown or disruption occurs, the impact could be devastating to the business. Other than repair costs, the company has to factor in loss of sales and potential loss of customer confidence. 
As such, it is clear that operating an ASRS requires a team of skilled engineers and IT specialists. That needs to be extensive and regular maintenance for the mechanical components as well as the IT components to ensure smooth operations. There are different types of ASRS. A standard load ASRS is designed for products fitting into defined uniformly sized containers. This can be in the form of full pallets, roll cages, and any other large sized container holding a heavy payload. A variation of the standard load ASRS is the mini load ASRS, designed for small products fitting into defined uniformly sized containers such as totes, trays, and cartons. Carousels are another type of ASRS. There are two distinct types of carousel storage units, horizontal storage carousels, which rotate and store products in a horizontal plane, and vertical storage carousels, which rotate and store products in a vertical plane. The grey-orange butler is an artificial intelligence-powered goods-to-man robotic system designed for automated inventory put-away, replenishment and order picking in a high-throughput order fulfillment situation, such as in e-commerce businesses. It significantly reduces order fulfillment and inventory replenishment time in a warehouse and thereby provides a competitive advantage for the business. The auto store is a fully automated storage system designed to efficiently store small parts and facilitate high-speed small order and single item picking. Robots collect the required bins and present them at integrated picking stations, increasing efficiency and maximizing space utilization. In 2013, Texas Instruments became the first company to set up auto store in Asia, specifically in Singapore. This automated warehouse project comprised of 63,000 bins and 36 robots. It was built at a cost of 12.8 million and saw their capacity increase from 500 million units to 2 billion units. This increased their capacity such that they were able to better support 54 countries globally while still achieving a 40% increase in productivity. With that, we have reached the end of lecture 14. See you next time.